Chapter 11 The chief physician walked into the room. Well, ma'am, the test results are back. From what I'm seeing here, I'm guessing you have cobetonge and have been using that as your primary means of recovery for years. It is my preferred method, Kayla admitted, but wasn't comfortable providing any further information. Why do you ask? That form of regeneration can be problematic. For example, if you were to break a finger and allow it to merely regenerate without having the bone set properly, it will never heal quite right. Looking at these test results, I do find myself wondering just how many bones you've had broken over the years. Her body, in its current form, was still new to her, but that didn't mean some traces of old injuries didn't remain. Kayla blushed. A few. Your nervous system is like a maze. I wouldn't even know where to start. Medically treating you at this time is problematic. If you were a subterran, I'd at least have some idea what I'm looking for, but your physiology doesn't match anything on file, the doctor said as he pulled up a display screen. We just don't have a baseline to work from. The doctor indicated areas on the screen as he continued, if you could tell me what you are, it would be extremely helpful. Listing unique on your admission papers tells me nothing. If you were a member of an insectal species, it would at least explain what I can only assume are parts of your peripheral nervous system, which seems to work alongside your central nervous system. If I were to ignore your general morphology without any additional information, I'd have guessed you were a colmion or some other mollusk. Kayla blinked in disbelief. I have some gyron and elderani genes mixed in there, but... Well, gyrons did evolve from mollusks, the doctor said as he scratched his head but that wouldn't explain this. You're clearly not an actual gyron. We do have some Eldorani records on file, but that doesn't begin to explain this either. Kayla scowled. Clefarians are insectal, Kivaz's thoughts arose from deep within her. If he checked for that connection, we're likely to be dissected. Just fix what you can, Kayla sighed. Mend the bones and I'll take care of the rest. I have to ask, the doctor said cautiously, you're not a colmion who's used some kind of psionic metamorphosis ability, are you? No, Kayla scoffed. Well, I'll tell the staff to do what they can, the doctor said with a shrug. Thank you, Kayla said nervously. Oh, one more thing, the doctor said as he pointed to a ring-shaped mass within the scan of her cranium. I don't suppose you know what this is? No sir. Kayla said sheepishly. Shinji studied her with confusion until the doctor left. Well, as long as they can speed up the healing of my muscles and bones, I should be fine, Kayla said in an attempt to soothe Shinji. That was a lie, Shinji said softly. You know what that was, don't you? Kayla could feel Kivaza's unease. I have a marking on the top of my head that's sh like that, Kayla chose her words carefully. I think it has something to do with that. The answer would register as true without mentioning that it was the location of the clatharian gland within her skull. Kayla was relieved that he accepted her answer without pressing her further. Within the depths of her mind, Kivaza seemed to approve of Kayla's answer. Her other self was far more guarded with Shinji. Kivaza had said she liked him as well, but that those feelings should be seen as a source for concern. Kayla had to consciously remind herself that she hadn't even known him for a full day yet. Not for about two more hours. She felt as if she'd known him much longer. Every fiber of her being wanted to trust and confide in him, and she probably would have if Kivaza hadn't been pushing back against the impulse from the start. The entire situation struck Kayla as a bit hypocritical. Why was it perfectly fine for Kivaza to confide in Cyanide, but taboo for Kayla to do the same with Shinji? Was the true conflict between her two souls the lack of trust between them? For each of her halves to make a whole, they needed to be equal. Until Kivaza was willing to step aside and allow Kayla to fully share herself with Shinji, that just didn't seem possible. Cyanide had mentioned something about soul transference rituals and had offered to help them both be separated so they could each have their own bodies. Kayla understood what she was really saying. 
she'd be the one in a new body, and Kivaza would be the one keeping the original. At the start of her life, this body had been Kayla's. During their first conflict with the creature known as Iron Nightmare, Kayla had been cast out of her body by her shadow. She'd gone through a similar ritual to be loaned Bruja's body while the raven-haired shop owner was loaned the body of Kayla's mother, Valk, which she'd hijacked after losing her own. Aisha seemed to be the seer of the Lamentics in much the same way as Labartha's positions guided Project Acorn and the Nameless Alliance. Both were clearly fallible, yet the zealous devotion to Labarth was disturbing, more so after his death, which was most likely still being kept secret. She'd lost her own body and then was responsible for the death of Bruja's original body. The arrangement had worked out well, in the end, for the shopkeeper. Labarth had foreseen that and had arranged for Bruja to receive a new younger body to compensate for Kayla's actions. That was the point at which Labartha's predictions began to go astray. Kayla was saved by Kivaza's return within Kayla's first body. Maybe it wasn't a good idea to explain everything to Shinji. Again, how would he feel about Kayla if she did agree to have her soul relocated? Lady Dark Seed certainly had enough money to have a custom clonal body manufactured. If she let him be involved in the process. Kayla, Kivaza's thoughts arose from within her, I don't want you to leave me alone, but it's your decision to make. If you decide it's the path you want, do it for yourself not to please someone else. You've known Shinji for a day and you're talking about letting him have a voice in what body you'd be spending the rest of your life in. Do you understand why I am so concerned now? Kayla frowned darkly. Is something wrong, Shinji asked. I was just lost in thought, Kayla answered with a sigh. Shinji looked confused. I tried to peek and didn't pick up any. They weren't surface thoughts, Kayla replied dismissively. Ah, Shinji said with a warm smile, lost in deep thought. Not that deep, Kayla teased with the intention of flirting, but was distracted by pain shooting through her entire body. Kivaza's efforts to suppress her nervous system must be failing. The constant exertion must be exhausting. Do I need to get help? Shinji asked in a voice full of concern. Tell the nurse I've reconsidered my opinion on painkillers. Yes, Lady Dark Seed, Shinji said merrily and then rushed out of the room. The door stayed open for longer than Kayla expected before slowly closing. Cloak of the Unnoticed, Kayla said aloud. It's a nifty little ability. It's not quite invisibility. It just makes you seem so uninteresting that people just don't realize you're there. The side is you can't interact with objects or it dispels the effect. I know you're not another Ilanjani, because that electronic door knew you were there. So, before my friend gets back here, and you sneak back through the door while it's open, would you mind telling me who you are and why you're here? Oh wait. Silly me, that will shred your cyanic cloak too, won't it? If you're here to deliver a message, you'd have to be carrying it when you activated the ability which runs the risk of me not noticing it, doesn't it? It will be hidden until you let go of it anyway, so how about I reach out and open the door for you, and you can just leave it right here before you go. Kayla patted the bed next to her left hip and then reached for the button to open the door with her tail. She slowly counted down from five and then opened the door. It stayed open for a couple seconds too long and then closed. Much to her surprise, her unexpected visitor hadn't left a note for her. I wonder what all that was about, Kayla thought to herself. I don't know, Kivaza replied, not everything is about us. They might have just had the wrong room. Then again, Cyan did say P.R.I. is after us. So, be cautious. I will, Kayla thought to her other self. I'm honestly more concerned with what I witnessed during my walk earlier. Share the memory with me. Kivaza thought. Not yet, Kayla insisted. She'd insisted on just wearing Shinji's button-down shirt during the medical examinations. The hospital gowns were just such ridiculous garments, and the shirt offered about the same amount of coverage. If she was going to wear something that didn't provide any actual physical protection, she'd rather it be something comforting. 
She also enjoyed him helping her with the sleeves each time they required her to disrobe. The throbbing pain in her back and sides was making her feel weak. The small scrapes and cuts had already healed up quite nicely, but the damage to her muscles and spine were a major concern. With everything going on she'd been concerned about being drugged and was still apprehensive even if she had relented in her opposition. Her current injuries were insignificant in comparison to the injuries she'd endured during her training on Midgard, but there was nothing natural about the method Sadakar had used to repair her damaged body. She was also far more fragile back then. Prior to the comprehensive scan, the initial results had shown that she had multiple spinal compression fractures, so it could have been much worse. The chief physician had been the fifth doctor to speak with her. The other four had lectured her on the consequences of treating injuries like hers with Kobe Tomj alone. Lying flat on her back wasn't painful. Her legs wouldn't carry her weight, but her tails moved just fine, which was why the staff were so insistent on the comprehensive full body scan. Not being formally associated with any of the factions was problematic enough that the hospital staff seemed unwilling to provide much treatment until they'd checked her current account balance. Years earlier, her brother, Vance, had been treated in the same facility. It wasn't until today that she understood why her aunt Bookworm had signed him in using her black church credentials. The major factions covered all the expenses. In Kayla's case, they seemed eager to drain her personal account by any means possible. She heard a quiet knock on the door. Come in, Kayla called out, after moving her tails to make sure her private parts were covered. Excuse me for intruding, the Udbar said quietly as he stepped through the door, closing it behind himself. Oh, it's you, Kayla said with the best smile she could muster. I didn't know I was cleared for visitors. How's Cyan? Strictly speaking you're not, he answered. Due to Cyan's connection to the Lamentic High Court, she arranged to allow her to visit you. As her registered defender that extends to me as long as I'm acting under her direct orders. You don't have to be that formal, Kayla scoffed before reiterating, how is she? The Udbar looked momentarily confused. I'm here to inquire into your well-being, not discuss anything beyond that. I'm not answering that until you tell me if she's all right. Due to the strength and structure of the device, she was not physically harmed. Was that adequate to facilitate a reply? Kayla could feel Kivaza's rage building within her. Not really, Kayla grumbled. Your answer implied she suffered some other sort of harm. If you value the life of the young man you arrived with, I recommend you not remind me, or her about the manner in which he extracted her from that building. Oh, Kayla said in embarrassment, the idiots with the cameras. Yes, that, the Udbar said, trying to maintain their stone-faced composure. Tell her they're still trying to make sense of the medical scans, and they're planning to deal with my muscle and spinal injuries later today. Kayla paused at the look of distress in his eyes. It will be fine, I'm sure. I can sign the forms to allow her to see my records if it will give her peace of mind. That would be helpful, the Udbar said while trying to not show relief or excitement. I will. It would be highly appreciated if you take care of it at your earliest convenience. I've also been instructed to give you these, the Udbar said as he withdrew a box from his pocket. Kayla took the box from him once he stepped closer to the bedside. I was informed that you neglected to collect the communicator which was paired with that pendant. As not to start needless conflicts in the future, she purchased a replacement ICD rig that she hopes will meet your approval. Kayla opened the box and stared inside. They're worn like over-the-ear earrings, the Udbar explained, sometimes called ear cuffs. The one on the left is the actual ICD unit. The right one is just decorative. They're pretty. Kayla acknowledged, but I was a little surprised she went with a black feathered motif. Not even close to the color of her wings. Kayla bit her lower lip as she saw his obvious discomfort at her calling the Ullervecule Cyan's wings. Could you help me put them on and show me how to use them? I'd be happy to assist, the Udbar said with a quirky little smile. I'm sure it that would please Lady Cyanide. 
When the executioner is happy, I'm happy. Kayla waited in patient confusion as he fitted the jewelry over her ears. They suit you well, the Udbar said appraisingly. She didn't mention that she's an executioner, Kayla said cautiously. I do so enjoy that reaction, the Udbar grinned. Just stroke the bar on the top of your left ear, like this, and it will activate the device. As he ran his finger along the feathered section above her left ear, a telepathically broadcasted image seemed to appear in front of her left eye which displayed a listing of the contacts stored in her pendant. Are you going to answer me? The ICD transmits the image directly into your mind, the Udbar continued as if she hadn't spoken. As a result, only the wearer can perceive the display. You can either select the contact by focusing on the listing you want to select or scroll through them by running your finger along the top like this. Kayla smirked. No answer. It wasn't a question, the Udbar responded dryly. I don't answer statements. Language is important, princess. A subtle nuance or shift in meaning between the speaker and listener can reveal a great deal. You're toying with me, aren't you? Kayla snickered. When there's an incoming message, it will beep softly. Tap the bottom here, by the earlobe to receive the message. That should take care of your instruction. I do hope you paid attention. I understood, Kayla said, but before you go. Tell me why you called me princess and her an executioner. The Udbar stepped back toward the door and bowed his head in respect. It would seem I'm done here. Now that I've faithfully executed my instructions, I'll be on my way. Kayla watched with mild irritation as he left the room without uttering another word. She could feel the rumble of Kivaz's laughter deep within her. You told her about Veshtaka, Kayla thought to her other self. I told Cyan my name, Kivaza insisted. During the last of those visions, you were the half that became Veshtaka, not me. I've always been the other princess, Kivaza. The chimeric second soul of Veshtaka before our father liberated us both from being trapped in a single body. I was just as much a princess as you were in that vision of the past. The difference is that you seem to think you're the princess reborn. I never died. Under Cyan's instruction, her defender honored me. I thought it was nice. Get over yourself. We never did decide on something she could call me other than Lady Dark Seed that wouldn't draw as much attention as my actual name. You don't have that problem, Kayla. I just don't like you being called Princess, Kayla retorted. It's too easy to twist into an insult. Why don't you just ask her to call you Shadow? I know that's what I called you when I was younger, but it wouldn't bother me if someone else called you Shadow. Maybe. Kivaza's thought halted abruptly as the door to their room opened. Shinji strode into the room with a member of the nursing staff following just behind him. Kayla wasn't sure of the nurse's species or gender. They were clearly a bestial-type counter-hominid of one of the cannonoid varieties. The best way to tell the difference between these species could usually be seen in the shape of their snout, the color of their teeth and eyes, and the thickness of their fur. The nurse's head was too narrow and snout too short to be lupian. Their eyes were the wrong shape to be caiman, and their gray fur was shorter and thinner than any species she was familiar with. Their ability to perform their job was far more important, and asking could be seen as dismissive of her role in society, but Kayla really wanted to know. This should help with the pain, the nurse said as she held out two plastic containers. One contained three small pills the other held a clear liquid. Kayla reached out and took both containers, and sniffed each of them. It was just water. Are you sure these are safe for me? Kayla asked nervously. Yes, ma'am, the feminine-sounding nurse replied swiftly with an unfamiliar accent. I just came on shift. The director of nursing requested that I be assigned as your personal nurse for the remainder of the day. I was more than happy to take on the extra shift, but I'm a little bit confused. What are you? Kayla burst out laughing, but abruptly stopped as a new wave of agony swept through her body. I was about to ask you the same question, Kayla admitted, and, out of curiosity, 
why did they call you in? I mean you specifically? I'm a member of a Lupian subspecies, the nurse explained. It's a long story involving a colony that was believed lost about 30,000 years ago. We're known as the Arum. We're listed in the Information Society Species Indexes, but we're a fairly new entry. As for why they chose me, it's not that important really. Please tell me. There's only one known species that resembles Terrans which have tails. I am the only one here that's worked with them. I can only assume that someone assumed you were an Alorn. A what? Please take your medicine, Lady Dark Seed. I will, Kayla said. I offered to make my records accessible to a friend. Before I take this could you provide me with the necessary paperwork? The nurse took a display console out of one of her pockets. It was about a quarter the size of a clipboard. After bringing up the form on the display, she walked Kayla through queuing up Cyan's contact information and transferring it into the document. Did it work? Kayla asked while looking at two blacked out lines on the document. Yes, ma'am. It's a security access lock. Only the issuer and recipient will be able to access the document. Naturally hospital staff will be able to view the names if they have a high enough clearance level. I suppose I shouldn't be surprised both lines are locked. You are Lady Dark Seed. Kayla took the pills. Your surgery is scheduled to begin in about two hours. That should help you relax until then, the nurse said. I know you said they look like Terrans with tails, Kayla was startled that she was already starting to slur her words, but why did they think I was an Alorn? One tail, the nurse corrected her. If they'd actually read my report, they would have known better. You don't have a uterus or mammary glands, like them, but you don't have horns, or a single thick tail with a. As the pain faded, Kayla dozed off. Her body wouldn't respond. The surface underneath her stomach was hard and cold. Her vision was blurred, yet she could tell the room was well lit her arms, legs, abdomen, and tails had been strapped down to the table. The scent of blood filled her nostrils. Kayla could hear a faint clicking sound from behind her and felt uneven pressure coursing up and down her back. Sir, she's waking up, a voice whispered somewhere nearby. Not surprising with her metabolic rate. Administer another ten units, please, a different voice spoke. Yes, doctor, the first voice said, as Kayla heard a faint twisting noise. What is happening to me? Kayla thought in panic as she faded back into unconsciousness. Kayla felt confused and disoriented as the world around her started to come back into focus. Her arms, legs, and tails were still being restrained. It felt as if there was a force holding her evenly in place. She was naked. She didn't even have the jewelry cyanide had given her. Her face and head were pushing against a padded ring in one side of the surface she had been laid on. There was a bucket on the floor in front of her which was almost a quarter full of vomit. She was thankful she hadn't eaten before heading out this morning. Actually, she hadn't eaten anything since her dinner with Shinji. I wonder what tonight's special is at Gestagio's, Kayla murmured as she stared into the bucket and found herself trying to identify the bits that weren't fully digested. What a strange day that was. Shinji had been so insistent she had her hair cut at that salon but hated the little gem the girl put on her forehead. Lady Dark Seed? A nearby voice said. Cyanide was so convinced there was a tracking device in the gem. Were the people that attacked the cave loyal to Corbijani, were they PRI, or maybe local security, Shadow Brigade? No that didn't make sense. Shinji worked for them, and he wouldn't do that. Lady Dark Seed, nearby voice said. Can you hear me? Cyanide's feelings toward her were of longing, not the sort of overwhelming lust she felt from Shinji. His desires threatened to drown her. It was intoxicating. She should be able to hear you, a deeper voice said insistently. Where is he now, and where was she? She's still not responding, the first speaker said. Reduce the neural suppressor, slowly. 
I'm not sure that's wise, a third, higher, voice said. She's fully restrained, the second speaker insisted. Just bring her up enough that she's capable of consenting to the next stage of the procedure. What procedure? Kayla muttered groggily. I heard something, the first voice said. That should be sufficient. Stop right there. Yes, sir, the third voice said. I'll make note of the dial settings. Well done, the second speaker said. If there are any more anomalous readings notify the rest of the staff immediately. We don't need another incident. We need you to deactivate the knack ability involved with regeneration. It's interfering with the procedure. Kayla tried to talk, but her words seemed strange to her own ears. Did anyone catch that? The first speaker said in confusion. Excuse me, a familiar female voice said meekly. Ijkratishat? Kayla said. Yes, Lady Darkseed, the woman said warmly. It's me. Kayla sighed with relief at the sound of the A-room's voice. You can understand her, the deep-voiced surgeon asked. Mostly, the nurse said. The accent and inflection are a bit strange but I understand most of it. Dershra Vatnai? Kayla listened to the woman's footfalls as she approached. My name is Nelfry Uckland Ware, Nelfry, Kayla said softly. The nurse moved the bucket to one side then sat, cross-legged at the end of the operating table and leaned forward so Kayla could see her. Udinersu? I'm sorry, the nurse said. I've never heard that root linguistic conjugate. What language is it? The speaker with the higher voice asked. The nurse ignored the question. Lady Dark Seed, if you're willing to switch off your regeneration toggle, I can walk you through what we're doing. Ioj, Kayla said as she attempted to nod. Dropping her regeneration ability is considered implied consent, the nurse remarked. Well done, the deep-voiced surgeon said. Let's get back to work. When you arrived, you had three damaged ribs, one on the left and two on the right, as well as some spinal damage. She glanced to the right. Two vertebrae in your lower back and a third between your shoulders. If it wasn't for the unusual structure of your nervous system, you'd most likely have been paralyzed. Irakian Tavridge Nockel? Yes, the nurse smiled warmly. You were very lucky. Kayla smiled to herself. That wasn't at all what she was trying to say. She had no idea if the nurse had understood her or not but the playful look in the woman's eyes hinted that she might have understood that she'd threatened to burn down that tree if it ever got in her way again. While you were out, they used a polymerized resin to seal the damaged vertebrae. It should support your regenerative capabilities and will prevent further damage in the interim. Several of the muscles in your back were partially torn. They took samples and replaced them with new muscles fabricated on the bioprinter. Estereva Veral Regade? Your regeneration was interfering with the reattachment process. They're working on that now. The next step will be replacing those three ribs. The doctors can replace the bone, but it will take a few weeks for the marrow to grow back. Bones mend faster without marrow, so it's nothing to worry about. They'll have to put you back under once they're done attaching your replacement back muscles. Kayla winced as a jolt of electricity shot down her spine. Are you all right? The nurse asked. I think so, Kayla said in surprise. Hey, I can talk normally again. What was that? The nurse leaned to her right to look over at the surgical staff. They just removed the clamps that were bracing your spine, the nurse whispered. I'm guessing that's what was causing your little speech issue. Little, Kayla grumbled softly. I'm not even sure what language I was speaking. Really, the nurse looked shocked. I'll make sure to give you my contact info Luncheon. before you leave the Giant hospital, so you can ask me about it privately. What are you two whispering about over there? The deep-voiced surgeon asked. Sex advice, Kayla answered irritably. Nelfry giggled. Turn back up the neural suppressor, the first speaker instructed. Is there anything else you'd like treated? Nelfry asked urgently. My right calf, K 
Kayla said it dozed back off. She spent half of her day in recovery after getting out of surgery. The entire situation seemed more than a little bizarre. Wealth and a famous, or perhaps infamous, name had been thrust upon Kayla during her trip back to Hyrule. Maybe it was just culture shock or the absurdity of the situation, but if it wasn't for the relative convenience that came with her title, she'd prefer to be called anything else. The majority of the staff insisted on treating her like royalty despite her protestation. She had to keep up appearances, despite the mild resentment she felt from the majority of the hospital workers. She didn't feel more important than everyone else, but they certainly treated her like she was. She felt ready to leave, and in fact in better physical shape than she had when she'd first arrived on planet long before the staff was willing to discharge her. Nelfry was thrilled to exchange contact information with Lady Darkseed, even if Kayla was extremely irritable at the time. Talking with her right after Kayla had been visited by a rep from the billing department wasn't the best choice. It would have been nice if they'd talked with her about the cost of the medical procedures at some point prior to the operation. She could afford it, but that was hardly the point. You'd think they'd have the decency to warn you that their top-tier surgical procedure would run 162 gal creds. 1.6 million credits seemed insane for a day trip to the hospital. She couldn't imagine they build the factions that much. They'd even build her for fabricated muscles which they had to recycle due to insufficient, non-matched density, whatever that means. They then had the nerve to ask if she'd like to leave a tip for the nursing staff. Not Nelfry, who they'd assigned to be her personal nurse for the day, but the nursing staff in general. A 10% recommended tip. They're out of their minds. The majority of the nursing staff were from some religious order, the government taxes any tips by around 60% as unearned income, then the order takes half of what's left. The average dock worker only pulls in around 50 credits a week, and there's just no way they could pay for treatment if they're injured, forcing them to only work for factions. The entire system is broken. Poor Nelfry would probably be better off, and better paid, if Kayla hired her to be her own personal nurse. You'd think a hospital that siphons so much money from their patients and the factions could afford food that didn't taste pre-chewed. After leaving the hospital Kayla and Shinji stopped by a compounding pharmacy in the Edge to pick up a care package cyanide had arranged for her earlier in the day.